to two news at 10 o'clock. Glad you are with us this evening. The last quarterback from San Francisco to win the Super Bowl, former BYU Cougar Steve Young. It was nearly two decades ago, but his legacy still lives on. Steve Young in New Orleans tonight for the big game, but we caught up with him last week in the Bay Area before he headed out. The football great talked to us about what he called his mundane yet sublime life these days. <laughs> In the world. Nearly 20 years ago at the Super Bowl, and it was Steve Young's time in the spot. <laughs> All the elements of the Super Bowl can create a, a lot of uh, anxiety for players and not play as well as they wish they would have. But that wasn't the case for Young, who had been to the big game twice before as backup to Joe Montana. Steve Young is now number one all time with six touchdown passes. So that's why. I, I guess I'm grateful, and really the 49ers through the years, we always have played well in the Super Bowl, so I don't know if that's just luck or preparation or both. I saw a quote from him that said, you know, I haven't passed, what, six touchdowns in a, in a game in my life, and then I did it in the Super Bowl? I had six interceptions in, in, J, in JV in high school, so I, I guess that weighted it out finally. <laughs> it made it only fair. He says that's what fueled him, but now retired, he says he tries to focus on the positive. Oh, they're making fun of me. <laughs> Referring to his colleagues at Huntsman Gay Capital, a private equity firm in Palo Alto, where he now works as a managing partner, his jerseys and magazine covers all on display. Oh, I'm not in charge of these walls. They, they make fun of me. In fact, I'm worried about what they put up because they've tried to make, they make fun of me a lot. So luckily, these are these are okay. But living in the suburbs of Silicon Valley, driving into the office, then back again to be with his wife and kids, Young says his life now is quite normal, and that's just the way he wants it. It's been nice because I live a uh, very, um, in many ways, both mundane but sublime life, and it's it's and it's really building on the things that are most important in my mind. And charity work is one of those important things. This is Sophie's place. Currently under construction here at Primary Children's in Salt Lake, Steve and his wife Barb came up with this idea to honor a friend of the family, Sophie Barton, who passed away, a singer who volunteered here. This for the kids' music therapy program. They'd never had a place like this before. It should all be completed by the spring of this year, all thanks to the Forever Young Foundation. Things that are passionate, we're passionate about, we care about, we really want to do is we find time to do and we I think everyone who gets involved with our foundation has um, certain parts of our foundation that they love at the top of his game this great 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 grandson of Brigham Young was often seen as a representative of his faith Mormons really haven't been there before but you know what? It's okay if I think it's actually positive if a Mormon treads that ground a little bit. He says he was used to being the example. I grew up kind of the only Mormon in town. So when the light of fame came shining, it wasn't new territory for him. When I was playing, I thought, oh, I hope I play well because there's some kid in Gunnison or some kid somewhere out in the world that is going to say, oh no, he's Mormon. Oh yeah, they won. There's so, you know, I just there's some of that that you know that's not the end of the world or either way. And there's lessons with winning and losing, but. It's been in my mind. Named one of people's 50 most beautiful people, Young is quoted as saying he was the eighth wonder of the world, Mormon, 30-something, and single. I mean, it's a joke now because uh, uh, I look back and uh, I, I did not spend the time <laughs> getting things put together, whether it was clothing, <laughs> my hairdo. I mean, I really do look back and think uh, I needed to get married a long time ago. <laughs> he met his wife, Barb, in 1999 on a blind date, one both of them resisted. And as corny as it may sound, he says he knew she was the one even before he saw her. And honestly, from the first time I heard her voice, I knew that that was it. 13 years and four children later. A favorite son of Utah, of course, a star quarterback for the Y. I see, I see that as a second home for me. Of the sacred places in my life, that's one of them. But many may not realize his early allegiance to the U. My first breaths were uh, as a youth. He was born in Salt Lake when his family lived on campus. My dad said, don't forget where you were born, you know, when I was playing for BYU. I said, I remember, I remember. His life's playbook, no longer full of X's and O's. Now his game plan, football, fame, his foundation, and his family. And he says you can't have it all. You just have to be willing to work for it. You, you don't want to be self-limiting, but you want to be realistic. And uh, some things are challenging, and uh, I'm never afraid of a challenge.
He is inspiring, isn't he? My. And he continues to do a lot of work right here in Utah with his Forever Young Foundation. He and his wife, Barb, will be up at Snowbird next month for the <laughs> Wasatch Adaptive Sports 27th Annual Steve Young Ski Classic. Mm. You know, to see the joy on his face, you could just tell much, tell how much he just loved playing the game. Yeah. And he was terrific. And he chewed up the Packers too many times. <laughs> that was the one thing. But they came back after a while, too. So that's a good thing. Well, I was always such a big fan. And, you know, he didn't disappoint. It was fun to be able to I meet him in person. Was. Yeah. All right. Terrific. Hey, uh,